Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa, your expert hypnotherapist and stress management consultant. Hope this day is a wonderful day for you. You know that magic has already happened because you are here. So I like to say when we open our eyes, when we are present, when we are living in the living, that's already a magic. Why? Because frankly, I think we don't know what's going to happen the next moment from now, an hour from now, a year from now. And yet as humans, we always want the best for our children, our families, and for ourselves. Today, I'm going to be talking about stress. There are three levels of stress. <laughs> and one of the stress is how we cope with stress, how we manage stress, and how we master stress. So stress is literally all around us. And I don't think there is a human being that has not experienced some sort of stress because stress is from the outside but how we deal with it how we cope with it how we manage it or master it is about you about us so let's delve into this um, and if you have mastered stress by all means, please let me know how you did it so that I too can master it. Um, I like to say when we start coping with it, stress is a term we use every single day. Coping, managing, uh, a lot of coaches uh, promote, come and learn how to manage stress or cope with stress. But no one is talking about mastery. Where does mastery come from? I like to say, when we talk about coping, and I don't know how you cope with it, but coping is like, I need to have the tools to cope with something. Uh, it's struggling with stress and saying, I don't know how to cope with it. That means I am out of control. It's happening and I have no knowledge of how to control it. Okay, so in a way it's like I can do something about my stress and yet I don't know what to do. When we start thinking about that, it's in a way muddling and giving you self-doubt because uh, there's financial stress, family stress, um, physical health stress, children's stress, uh, moving stress, relationship stress. Uh, marriage can be a stressful thing. You know, I had a friend who used to be an amazing person. Well, I still have that friend. But she's amazing in taking tests. Okay, she can go, she's done the bar test, she is an attorney and can practice in what, four states. And for her to take a bar exam was just like drinking. It's like she would study and then a day before she would just glimpse, go take a test, passed. Even the California bar when uh, I said, apparently this is one of the hardest bar exam, she says, it's just another test. And she did it. She had taken the studies and then she went flying colors. So the fundamental belief is that um, when it comes to coping, that you have no control, you have no choice, and you have no voice on that personal stress in what's happening to you. Now, let's see how you identify with it because there is a lot of people who taking a test is 
is something that is quite burdensome. And I know long before I started doing the work that I am doing right now, which is amazing. I've been practicing as a clinical hypnotherapist for over 22 years. And I only, it dawned on me this when I was doing a speaking for my hypnotherapy conference yesterday, uh, actually Sunday. And when they asked me to send the information, how long I've been practicing and they validated, it's like, wow, I, taking a test for me prior to being a hypnotherapist and doing all that when I was in the legal field and wanting to be an attorney, I went for my LSAT exam and I froze both times. Now, taking a test is not very easy for me. And apparently, I, I put it in a way that, well, maybe I was not supposed to be an attorney because now it's a perception. How I cope with certain things are different than when I coped then. Because now I turn around and say, ah, I wonder what is the reason that this happened. I wonder why I'm going through all this. I wonder if you think the same way, do you? When something goes wrong, do you beat yourself up with it or on it? Or you turn around and say, okay, I'm done. There must be a reason what's happening. What am I attracting to myself? Or what is it that I want and yet I'm not attracting to myself? And I'm going to share something personal with you in just a few more minutes. So what is the next level of managing stress? Managing is like, um, it's how we communicate the message. We can modify and reduce certain stress levels and how it's impacting you. So you recognize that there is stress. You recognize what is the stress factor and then you say, how am I supposed to manage it? Whereas coping is, I don't know what to do. Managing is, I know what it is. I understand it. Now I have to find a way to manage it and put it into perspective. This is stressing me or that is a stress factor. And how am I dealing or managing my own internal stress level. So by learning to bring down the stress level, it's affecting you, it's affecting your body, it's affecting your psyche spiritually, definitely, and that internal stress level within yourself. Managing it is to not only having the tools and the techniques, but knowing what to do with it. Yesterday, I was under a lot of stress due to external factors. And in order for me to fly off the handle, I realized I am under duress, which is a lot of stress. And at that very moment, when I recognized something, and I could have screamed, I could have cried, which I almost did. <laughs> Actually, tears were welled up and I was to a point of like, it was, I was almost shaking. The first thing I did was recognize that it's affecting me tremendously. And the only reason was, is that fight or flight, right? So either fight with it, get more angrier or flight is flight off the handle. At that moment, I decided one thing, I'm going to ground myself. And I walked out of the office. I walked outside and I went for a 10 minute walk. So while I'm walking outside, this is how it's managed. Understanding what the stress is, who the culprits are, what can I do about it? What can I do about it? That means it's in my control. And then 
asking, what is it that I am attracting? What can I do? Shall I hold on to it? Or as I am walking, drop it, release it, let it go, and it's like, get a hold of yourself, girl. It's not the end of the world. Period. I like using this word. Either snap out of it or let's put a period. That means full stop right here. So my stress level where I had trepidation, I had already tears welling up, is like release. Swallow my saliva, knowing that I've got oxygen, I can breathe, I am walking, I am safe, I can manage. And at that very moment, turned around and saw someone walking a dog. And you know what? For just that moment, because that's what life is, just for this moment, even right now with you, if you have any kind of a stress happening, someone is in a bad situation, it's affecting you, stress level may be at home, stress can be at work, stress can be personal, financial, uh, professional, no matter what it is. Do you have to own it? Or you can turn around and say, just for today, just for now, I can manage this. It's not the end of the world, the world. And by doing that, it's you take that into your own hand. And just like a gyro, you can play with it. And instead of having a gyro and playing with it, because if you do this exercise right here, right now, put your hands together right here and just imagine you have a ball of gyro that it moves and it rotates and literally you can see the inside and maybe there is another globe inside. And as you just concentrate on that, concentrate at the palm of your hands your right hand, your left hand, and feel that movement. And just literally focus only in the center. And as you gently begin to do this, you feel this tremendous um, energy, sensation in between the palm of both hands. It's this energy of I can wiggle it, I can move it, and frankly, everything in between is in the palm of my hand. I can close it. I'm feeling the sensation so hard. It's like a hot, warm, piercing sensation. Yes, it's even tickling me. <laughs> and I don't know how you feel it, but when I feel something, something like this, a sensation like this, um, it's very much... Um, I feel it. I'm connected physically, mentally, emotionally, and it's this loving the sensation. I can play with it. It's like expanding it and like an accordion. This is what it is. This is called managing it. And then you turn around and say, I master it. So what does mastering your stress all about mastering is believing that you can alter it, that you can put the same, that whatever stressor it is, just imagine, just smash it, literally smash it, collapse it, and play with it. And that stressor whatever it was the cause of that stress, right? No longer has that influence over you. That's it. It's believing that you can alter the severity, the duration, and 
understand that you are responsible for interrupting that. By knowing that, it becomes yours. So that stress factor, as a matter of fact, before I mastered mine later in the afternoon, it took me a while because at that moment, I was not so aligned because it's like mastering it. It's like stop stress now. It's telling the mind. It's telling. It's commanding. Stress has no power over me. And it becomes a psychological, it becomes an internal. It's, uh, you're not allowing that stress level to escalate. I stopped the escalation of it. I came back and functioned and for the rest of the day. As a matter of fact, I was 80% much calmer. But here is what happened. And had I mastered it instead of managing it, managing it perfectly, it would have been null and void. But because there was still a linger of annoyance, the person I had a consultation with felt the energy through even Zoom. And he asked me, he says, are you annoyed with my answers? And it was just a consultation. And by all means, I was not annoyed with anything about him. But I want you to realize that when we have not released either a trauma, stress, someone who has said something that affects you, a smell that you have smelled and is just still lingering in there, the trigger point that it's still lingering with you either momentarily or hours or days, weeks, months, years after years, I want you to realize it is affecting you in one form or another. And that is what I work with. I can go from coping to managing to mastering because by the end of the night, I had already mastered. By the time I got home, that stress level was gone. This morning, it's a new day. It's a new stress level, but recognizing what it is that, you know, it's not part of the day. It's a new day. It's a new me. It's a new managing. It's a new mastering. Because what happened yesterday is not supposed to affect me today. It's there, but the effect, again, it's yours. The effect of how it's affecting you physically, mentally, and emotionally is only in your control. People can push our buttons, but then again, it's your button. Just like this button. Right? You can put it out of order. You can put that button out of order. And just imagine, here's a metaphor for you. Standing in front of an elevator and you want to go to the penthouse, but there's different floors that the elevator may stop at depending on who's pushing, what levels they are, what floors they are, because they too want to either go up or down, right? So here you are on the ground level and you push the button to the elevator so the elevator can come and the doors can open so you can get in and go to the penthouse because what's awaiting you at the penthouse you're going to a penthouse, a beautiful restaurant, because someone is waiting for you. And if you are in a rush, have you ever noticed this, that when you're in a rush, I take one day at a time. Yay, Jasmine, I love you. Have you ever realized that when you want to get into an elevator and get somewhere, <laughs> that elevator stops at every floor and you keep waiting, doing this, it's like, gosh, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. And the 
the more stressed you become, the slower the elevator is. It's uncanny. You might be in a traffic, you need to get somewhere, and red light after red light. Why? It's not because the red light knows you're there and it's slowing it down. It's because what we attract internally, that we're not coping with it, and then we get to the red lights. Everything is about what we allow. I know you might turn around and say, what's happening in my life is not what I wanted. This is not what I asked for. And yet, so much of our experiences, so much of what's happening is not that we ask for, but what we attract because of the internal, the internal uh, stress, the internal anguish within what we believe. And if we get into a flow and realize, ah, that one affected this one, this one affected this one, and I see the lesson. I am exactly where I am because of where I came from. And then I want you to understand a pattern. Because of our beliefs and the comfort zone that you are in, and when you want to make a change and you start modifying the change, you go out of your comfort zone. And just like that elevator, if you start pushing and pushing that button, and let's say that elevator has stopped at the fourth level and it just broke, it just stopped. No matter how many times you push that elevator, the button, it's out of order. So I want you to know one thing. Instead of waiting for this elevator to come down and you banging on that button, why don't you turn around and go to another elevator or take the stairs or take that elevator on the other side and you reduce your stress and you push one button and the elevator comes while this one is sticks, still stuck on the fourth floor and you get to go to where you want. Sometimes we are so inundated in our comfort zone with our thoughts of the past, of what we know, that when we want to make that change, if you are not practicing the new way of being, your internal dialogue of your past will bring you back because it's afraid of the new things. So in order for any change to become a transformational change to happen, it's about the pain factor. The pain has to be either so bad that you no longer want to be there or the gain of what you want has to be so wonderful that you can't wait for having it. So in your life, take a look at it. Number one, how are you coping with stress? Are you coping? Are you managing it? Coping means you feel out of control, you need tools and techniques, and that's what I'm here for. The second one is I manage it because I know what it is and I can take care of this. It may take me longer, but I know what to do. And mastering is that the moment it happens, you acknowledge it, you understand it, you use your tools and techniques and you master it and you move on. You move on. That means instead of waiting for this elevator to come, and for you to get agitated and angry, you turn around and you find another elevator or other means to get to where you want. As a hypnotherapist, this is what we do. We work with the subconscious level, first giving you the tools and techniques of how to manage habits, behaviors, stressors, right? 
or tap deeper into the subconscious and that's where everything happens shift the old patterns shift the old ways of managing things things that have been weighing you down and climb so i hope today's message was beneficial to you i would love for you to share how it, this message was something that became beneficial to you that you can use it from now on and if there's anything by all means i can help you shift a habit a pattern a behavior and the struggles that you're going through give me a call my name is lisa bulgari and by trade i'm a clinical hypnotherapist and yet a human being that just like you and anyone else goes through the same things we do so until next week i bid you goodbye and i wish you all the best god bless you and may the universal light surround you always bye jesse thank you for being here if you want to check out some of the testimonials that i've got click right here but if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago two weeks ago even a year ago click right here see you next time